Guess who stopped by today at the office? The man himself, Zach Whitman. What does he do? He's the guy behind the micro poetry. Now the question really I have is what I found intriguing about this, and it all comes back to him. Chris, how the heck do we meet? Oh, downstairs. We met That's in a restaurant that I work at. Right. Actually, you know what? It was when I, first of all, as, a, as crazy as it is, I don't s stop interviewing people. I interview whoever I can. I remember I, I asked you, like, hey, you want yeah. an interview? You want to do an interview? Remember that? Well, I noticed the Dirk Cobain candle. I didn't know it was a candle at the time. And I was right. like, I've seen the oh, guy's work. it was work. on the table. It was, I was having, yes, yes, yes. I was like, I've seen his work before. And you were like, yeah, he's in Bushwick. And I was like, yeah, I've seen some stuff, uh, lower Manhattan. And you were like, yeah, shoved a phone in my face and said, do a 30 second video. It was uncomfortable, <laughs> but it, Not uh, from me. <laughs> but you ended up giving me the candle and I took it home and it smelled great, obviously. Right. And then afterwards I used it as a pin holder on my desk. Um, so then flash forward. But wait, flash forward, I think it like four months passed by. At least right? three. And I'm like, I yeah. know you from somewhere. I know you. <laughs> right? And then I, I, I had like, I rewind in my head and you, like I said, oh shit, we've met and you did an interview. And then we, I, I think we started talking, just so you know. And I said, what do you do? He goes, he's a poet. And like my brain is thinking, I'm thinking, how do you get your word out? The intriguing part was the answer. How did you get the word out was, you said, I type it on these. I've been working on stickers for about a year. I thought that it was like the only way my words could jump off the page and like I could market myself as a poet because it's something that's very difficult to do. You know, uh, typically people write books, but in 2019, how are you actually going to create an audience, find people that love words and break stereotypes of writers? So I started with the stickers and then uh, Rafi came in at the right time right because right. i had just bought a smith corona typewriter at Which least probably. insane it's awesome it's a 1957 <laughs> old typewriter yeah. two months before i bought it i started and uh, it just so happened i had like five stickers left downstairs uh so I, I rushed them upstairs you know i'm busy waiting tables at this point um and you're looking at them with your wife and <laughs> love like, the stickers and i'm not kidding you i took those stickers right and I'm like, hey, we got to put, put them on here. Look, look at the sizing. It was just like perfect. Everything just, this is a little bit bigger. Oh, the, the, the back label hasn't come off of this thing yet. <laughs> but look at that. And like, I, I said to my, to my wife, take these downstairs to Zach. He's got to see them. And then? I got four <laughs> candles <laughs> within the hour almost. And uh, I took them home and I was like, okay, this is really cool. You know, we started messaging on, on Instagram, which is where I work out of primarily. Zach Women Live. <laughs> and right. um, so I started coming up with a design immediately. Before we had even talked about really doing it, I was like, what, like, how do we put these on the candle and make them pop? Like, what, how do we make the words jump? And so we came up with the initial design. I don't know where it's at, uh, but there, there's a straight line, you know, that was oh, kind yeah. of my initial. Let me get it. Hold on. Stay there. Continue on. I'm going to get to get the one. Yeah, so that initial design jumped, and I, I had like four or five designs done that night. I mean, it, it took like 30 stickers, but we, uh, we finally, I brought them to the office a few days later. Right. Maybe even the next day. I think it was the next day. Yeah, in <laughs> an excitement. And yeah, we got it done. But here's, the, here, what, I, what I'm kind of curious about is, what's the message? Like, what are you trying to, what... You know, getting the word out there, what's your message out at all, if any? You well, know, what, each what you... piece has its own message. Most of the poetry, uh, these are, as you were saying, they're considered micro-poetry. I don't really care to uh, call them anything other than poetry, but, like, they're considered micro-poetry for their length. And the thing is that most of these come from much larger pieces that will be in my book uh, that's coming out this year. I mean, oh, when is that coming out? I'm uh, not sure yet. I don't want to like give any like oh, okay, information, okay. <laughs> but there's hopefully two coming out this year. Um, one of which might be a little more photography based, but yeah, a lot of these are small sentences or uh, micro structures from the poetry that I, I actually write. Um, but wait a second, let me interrupt you. Sure. Your messages, there's an audience that like it hits them in the gut when they read it. 
because they're going through something, right? Isn't that the reaction you're always getting on your Instagram? Isn't the reaction you're getting that you, they're, they're reading this and it's just, it hits home. It's like, almost like, it's like the, the light goes on because they read and they're going through something in life. Or like, I know what I, the re, kind of reaction I'm getting. Uh, you know, I get a call, true example, a guy is, wants to say something to his girlfriend, the beauty, right? He had to have it because he was going through something with his girl, right? You had the one that you, I read that the girl wrote it on the, 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 the tattoo on her arm. God, so that's, that's so, nuts, yeah. <laughs> what, what was the story with that? Well, the goal has always been to help people. As an artist that has always been, I used to be in theater. I, I've been writing for 10 years now, uh, but my main start to this whole journey is, is acting. I started acting when I was five years old, and I uh, acted until I was around 21, 22, right. and I moved to the city, and I, you know, I'd been writing, I had already published a book, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna tell myself short, this is how I wanna change people. This is how I want to leave an impact, is, is writing, is words. I think they're much more beautiful when they're just simply placed. In, in theater, we always talked about how generalisms, or being general, not specific was the killer of art and I always hated that I hated it so much because it was like it didn't leave room for uh, any sense of like simplicity and I think the true like like simplicity is the most authentic form of art when you can give something and present it to someone in a way that makes them relate to their own life you know rather than the author or the painter I mean, that's well, it's never been about you. It's, art, right. right. <laughs> it's never about you. It's how they interpret it. That's what I was trying to get to. Right. The getting to was, it's always, you know, you hand it to them on a platter, right? And then they, they take it and they make it their own because they got their own story. Yeah. They, have, they all have their own story. Why one, like, what does light, light mean? What does this mean? And you get 10 different people. Listen, I know from my own product, right? Yeah. From my skull, for example, right? I show it to one person, they have an, a certain emotion towards it. It's the same, it's the same, pro, it's the same thing. It's but, beautiful. Yeah, it's, but one is beautiful, one is sexy, one is badass, one is, you know, uh, you know evilish. One, you name it, they each have their thing, right? But and you, I have mine as well, which right, is crazy because right. everybody's is so different than mine. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, we talked when we were here the first time, talked with your daughter about how some of these poems that are like considered love poems to mass audiences are not actually that they're like breakup poetry or you know other things so and that's a true story by the way <laughs> some of the dark ones that i s looked at it as what a enlightening but then both of them came and said wow this is a dark right that was a dark poetry that you wrote and that's why i don't talk about necessarily where they come from for me because it doesn't matter you know what i right. mean as as an artist i'm not going to sit here and say you know this one's about uh my friend almost dying this one's about a breakup, this one's about that, because it just doesn't matter. It's it's for you. The words are written for you. They're structured by me, but they're for you. And that's awesome. always been, I guess, company policy. <laughs> <laughs> I, so what are we going to do next? That's the key. Valentine's is coming, Zach. Valentine's is coming. We've got to find some poetry that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to tell you, the world's a fucked up place. Yeah. So a lot of people are going through some hard times. They go through, not necessarily about money. It's, it's never about money. It's about... They need a little uh, spiritual, uh, uh, you know, just something to bring them up. Uh, there, there's, there's people who are in love. They want to make it more in love. Or the people are, that time is coming. There's a focus on that time in February. Um, we're coming up with a few cool things that we're not going to tell you yet, naturally, because you're going to have to look for us. <laughs> come back for it anything else we got to cover today well no I you know the about the Valentine's about the love stuff I think that it's it's great that we can um, express love as human beings and, and like you're saying it's a time where we all need it so hopefully we're able to inspire some people with this Valentine's series although it's you know it's a limited time uh, series of candles that the designs pretty much ready we can't just wait to share with you but also it's a great it's gonna be a great gift. It's something that comes from a writer that's literally living in a small room in Astoria, uh, New York City, and and so good. <laughs> I, I'm working for you. That's it. It's like I want you guys to. I want you to hand this to your girlfriend or your lover or your partner for Valentine's, and I want them to 
react to it in a way that they, they know that this is, it means a lot. So hopefully we can get that message across and whatever you're trying to say this Valentine's season, we can make it happen for you. Zach Whitman, all done. <laughs> <laughs>